Dr. Jones again. One thing I want to talk about is standards. Uh, one of the things that's pushed RFID from the 1942 technology to the development of today is the fact that there are several standards that are driving our business. The first standard being the Walmart standard and the second standard being the Department of Defense United States standard. And those standards are uh, uh, pushing uh, many companies to integrate RFID into their um, operations. Specifically what we call passive technologies. Passive technologies are the fit right at currently 15 cent tags that look very similar to barcodes but pretty much are a wireless barcode. And our, uh, both uh, Walmart and also Department of Defense are looking to utilize this technology to drive down costs and tracking assets. One of the most common configurations of using this type of technology are a portal system. And you see here, a portal system is actually a group of antennas that are configured such that they can actually track um, um, tags and boxes as they go through this environment. Whether it's a pallet, whether it's cases, or whether it's even a person, it comes through this portal and allows for the ca automatic capture of information. You can also see a version of the portal right here on our conveyor systems. And these are the two types of systems that are most common when, we're, when you hear people talking about the Walmart standard or also the DOD standard and how they're going to capture information uh, to fit those two standards. When retail giant Walmart decided to adopt RFID technology, suppliers had to get on board as well. Basically, Walmart has a bunch of mandates that they're kind of working with, um, kind of pushing the implementation of RFID for tracking. Uh, through a supply chain, um, so they're kind of trying to work with their suppliers, you know, like all the products that they have within their stores uh, to apply RFID tags so it's easier for them to track their stuff as it moves through their distribution centers and then their retail stores and stuff like that. To comply with Walmart's plans, manufacturers need to know if their products will interfere with RFID readers. Liquids absorb uh, radio waves whereas metal reflects it and both of those are problems and you can see here that there's quite a bit of liquid in there and they wanted to make sure that it would not cause interference with the tags on the shipping cases. Research students test several products in the RFID lab at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. In doing this we found that uh, there was no real problems with the liquid in there and it should be, it should work fine for Walmart's applications. Students also test RFID tags in a simulated loading dock. Uh, basically, we're kind of learning some of the advantages and disadvantages of uh, using RFID at a dock door. Um, kind of seeing some of the problem areas, um, like if you have holes in your portal, like certain areas where the tags won't read, um, you have to have the tags oriented in a certain position based on the polarization of the antennas and stuff like that. Um, so basically just finding the places where they're having trouble and seeing if we can help with that and then uh, seeing how that affects their supply chain. Finding and solving problems in the lab will make the transition to RFID in the real world much smoother. Walmart and De Department of Defense are the main two uh, that, that are going to RFID and it's, it's just like uh, nowadays you see, you see the barcode on every product uh, down the line. It, I'm sure you'll see RFID on every single item and it's just it's becoming the standard even though it's relatively new.